definitely just start whether you have five minutes half an hour whatever it is you just need to find ways so that you can be on the front seat like whoa yes rather than <sighs> Hey designers, welcome to the HDDC hub. I'm Heather and this is where I teach new and aspiring designers how to build income streams from their crochet. Today I have put a little vlog together for you. I'm going to cover some of the things I wish I knew before I became a crochet designer. Now the list is really quite long. And so what I've done is I've put three of them here and I've also then created a download so that you can get five of the things I wish I knew. Like anything, becoming a crochet designer is a learning curve, um, it's a change in my life, a change in my career and definitely there's things that have cropped up that I wasn't expecting or I wasn't aware of and so I wanted to pass that information on. So three things I wish I knew before I became a crochet designer. Number one, I'm gonna go in with support. Now, it might not be what you necessarily expected to hear, um, so let's unpack this one. When I published my first pattern, I was really, really excited. I wasn't sure what to expect and I had sort of assumed that my friends and family would be as excited about it as I am. But when you take a step back and you think about it objectively, they're not really that interested in my crochet. Obviously, they will make nice, appreciative comments, but to them, it's just something that I do. And they don't necessarily understand the amount of work that goes into a design and what it means to release it. And um, I, the day I released my first pattern, I think I was a little bit taken back that I didn't receive like waves of messages and congratulations and blah, blah, blah. But to be fair, either they didn't really know what I was doing or it just wasn't a big thing. Like when you go to uni, that's a big thing. When you get a, you pass your driving test, all those things are big things that society um, definitely applauds but doing something within your own business not so much and so for myself I have learned that when I see somebody's released a pattern to say congratulations to say well done to ask them how they're feeling about it and just to make a little bit of fuss about it because that's something they've put a lot of time and a lot of effort into um, and I didn't appreciate that before I published my first pattern um, the other thing is in terms of support, friends and family, when you explain that what you're doing, they might look at you completely crazy. Like, um, they might say to you, for example, what, you can make money out of that, or like, either they're disbelieving, or they have got their own concept of what constitutes a career, and so they might not necessarily come out as a cheerleader, and like, I just want to say don't get too disheartened by that don't be too worried about that because I have definitely learned that a lot of people that care about me um, perhaps show maybe that they are unaware of how big the crochet community is and what's available out there and also um, they might have their own limiting beliefs such as you have to go to uni and you have to have a high paying job with um, a monthly paycheck to be able to pay your bills or whatever. And that's not a bad thing, that is just the, the way that they've grown up within society and that's the images that are in their mind. And so if you tell somebody that you're close to and straight away they're like, mm, are you sure you want to be doing that? Isn't it risky? Um, even when you're putting them out part time, you just kind of need to remember that they are doing that from a place of care and not to get like too upset about it or to think oh well if they're saying that then maybe it's true 
that's really not the case. Um, I have had people say to me, oh, so is there money within the industry or how are you going to pay your bills? And it can be frustrating, but the worst thing you can do is let that really get into your mind because a little worm like that can really start to eat and just leave a whole load of rot behind. And once you start worrying, you're not creative. Creativity takes a back seat and in this role you need to be creative so it's very much just a case of um, when you're sharing your news don't expect a huge fanfare if people do that for you that's great but if they don't it doesn't mean that they don't care um, it's just it's just the way society is and I haven't really given it any thought or f sort of ever had it impact on me until I started putting my patterns out and when I put my workbook out and it was just crickets from those around me that was really like oh because in my mind that was as big as graduating from uni like I'd put so much work into it um but we always see in films and on tv series people celebrating that their child went to uni or their friend went to uni but you don't see them celebrating that their friend set up a business and like honestly it is just now i realize that it's bizarre so if you see anybody release a pattern congratulate them cheerlead them and um if you don't necessarily get that response like i'm sorry but there are people out there rooting for you my other um learning is just because somebody is within your community or industry doesn't necessarily mean that they will support you within the crochet community i kind of assumed that i would just have the support and don't get me wrong i've had loads of support um but everybody works differently everybody has a different perspective um so sometimes you might receive a comment or somebody might say something to you and in the first instance it might hurt and you might take it personally but then actually once I've stepped back from certain comments um you know oh it might work for you but it doesn't work for me oh well, it's easy for you because you don't have children or it's easy for you because you don't have responsibilities like once I step back from things like that I realized that that was just their defense kicking in and their limiting beliefs kicking in so if somebody says to you oh well it's okay for you because you don't have children what they're actually saying is i have a family and i'm choosing to prioritize them but they just did it in such a backhanded way that it, that it then gets into your head and you almost feel guilty and it doesn't need to be like that um one because you never know what somebody's facing what somebody's battling everybody everybody has some sort of battle and i don't post about my private life on social media hddc is very much an amplified part of my life it focuses solely on me my crochet and um albi but it doesn't show my personal life it doesn't show a lot of the behind the scenes stuff because boundaries so when somebody says something like that to you they don't have the full picture they don't know whatever it is that you're going through and like i'm not going to share what i'm going through to get sympathy or whatever i just want to make it clear that sometimes people might say something because they're struggling themselves and rather than supporting one another their first instinct might be to sort of clap back at you and I think we've all been there where we've seen somebody else do something where like well if they're doing it why can't I do it or why didn't it work for me um and I think I've definitely like not so much learned but realized that everybody does things differently so what might work for me within my business doesn't necessarily work for another um designer and there's nothing wrong with that we're all individuals we all have our own individual style our own individual way of doing things um but it's just really really important to be polite and quite um compassionate and supportive towards people because like i am i know 
that I have my own privileges. I also know that there's a lot of other privilege out there that I am I am not a part of that train. But I like to think that if I see somebody doing well, that I will applaud them and that I would think, well, if they've done it, I can do it too. So what I'm illustrating with this example of me being a planner and so strategic is that really, really works for me and that is how I work as a person. But it also means that I can learn a lot from somebody who isn't set up in that way because obviously they have their own measures of success that they are reaching, they are doing certain things. What can I learn from that? What can I incorporate in, in the way that I run my own business? And also if they wanted to, what could they learn from me? How could they maybe streamline a couple of things to give themselves more crochet time or, um, and just sort of being open-minded to other people and the way that other people go about their business basically. Um, sometimes I know that it's so very easy, so easy to look at someone and think, oh, have you got that? I want that. but. I think it's much, much better to just go into it with a, oh, can you teach me? Just a very open mind. And because I have learned that, it is so, so important to have somebody on your side that is a cheerleader, somebody that does understand the way your mind works, somebody that you can go to and, and say, I'm having these doubts, these worries, or I've got these action points I'm trying to put in place. Can I just run them past you? is so so helpful to have that um, and it is also a huge reason why I've set up the membership for the hub um, it has really really inspired me to create that safe space that supportive space where people can have the cheerleading where you can share what that you're working on maybe what battles you're facing in terms of the crochet and everybody can just help out and then also a place that you can share like yes I've released a pattern and we can all just jump on that and just be a cheerleader for you because I think without that support behind you it can it can feel like a really big place out there and it, it could potentially become quite lonely so definitely definitely need that membership or that support in place for you without a doubt Okay, so another thing that I have learnt, oh my gosh, learnt, lesson learnt, don't need any more of this, please. Um, emotions, whew. It is completely normal to have a wide range of emotions and you will, and you will repeatedly get them. And even once you have released multiple patterns, it doesn't stop. Um, so, the range of emotions could be fear, it could be overwhelm, it could be sort of paralysis, am I good enough, what am I doing, what if this is wrong, um, there's all of the what if no one buys it, like all of these emotions, the what ifs, the doubts, they're just normal, they are just normal, they will always pop up. Um, I can't speak for anybody who's been in this industry for a long long time, but me who's now put out four patterns, I'm working on however many more plus i've put my workbook out those pat those patterns those emotions come in a pattern they really do um and so the most important thing that i have learned is coping strategies and how to reframe those thoughts in my mind so just before i started recording this um i had a really annoying thought in my head that was just repeating and it was then repeating so loudly that I could feel myself starting to feel tearful, really wound up and just, it had gone from a little like, what if this happens to, this is gonna happen, it's the worst thing ever and And so I have learned that the, the best coping strategies for me is to take my journal, list all of the things that I'm worried about, that I'm scared about, then list all of the evidence to point to the contrary. So for example, if I put, let's think of an example, if I put, nobody's ever gonna buy any of my patterns. Universe, I'm not claiming that. If I write that, that's something I'm scared about, then I would go and look for evidence against that. So I have sold over 600 patterns already. Um, there are multiple crochet designers out there that sell their designs full time. Um, there is a new pattern that's been released today by XYZ designer and people are posting that they've purchased it. So if they can purchase 
their pattern, then people are likely to purchase my pattern. And then I will then turn that into a prayer or you can turn that into a script. So um, you can just give thanks for everything that you already have had. So thank you for the pattern sales that I already have had. I know that more people are looking for my patterns. Please help them find me. Um, and then from there, I might write down the actions that I'm gonna take. So I'm worried that people might not buy my pattern, but I know that I have already sold over 600 patterns and it is just a case of more people need to see my patterns. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I am going to go and post about it on stories, I am going to post about it on Facebook, I'm going to send out an email to everybody to make sure they know that my new pattern is out and also I'm going to look into Facebook marketing. All these things that you can then do and then it takes you away, like step past that fear, step past those worries and make it work. Now, that works for me. You will have to find what works for you. It might just simply be putting your headphones in and dancing really sillily for like five minutes, which that also works for me. <laughs> it might be going and taking a walk. It might be a hot shower. Whatever it is, crocheting, granny squares, making, whatever it is, you just need to find ways that you can reframe those thoughts because those emotions are always gonna be there. They, they don't really go. Emotions aren't permanent, so you can't always feel happy, you can't always feel excited, you can't always be scared, but you will get a blend of them and maybe multiple times a day you will have like, bleh. And so I have had to learn to really handle those and to um, take control of the what ifs. I think one of the strongest tools that I have started to use is the what if up. So I joined a mindset group called Vibe and Flow by Chloe Slade and um, it's absolutely amazing, it really is. And one of the things that she discusses is, um, she teaches you to use is what if up. So if you're thinking what if I don't get any sales, then you add into it what if up. What if my sales exceed my wildest expectations? What if my sales exceed, exceed last month? What if my sales, and you spin it into a good light and then it starts to fill you with hope. And it, sound, it might sound odd to you, but honestly, that's one of the strongest things that I have learned by becoming a crochet designer is to get a really good handle on my emotions and my mindset. Um, because without it, without your mind, you're not gonna get where you wanna be. I truly think that becoming a crochet designer forces you to combat and deal with maybe inner traumas or inner insecurities, worries, because there's just no space for them and they might be hindering your progress. Um, I have done a lot of work on mindset, a lot of work on imposter syndrome, um, and just reminding myself to enjoy what I'm doing. I've waited so long to get to this point and now I don't want to spend every minute of it fretting about what's to come, I want to enjoy it. The third thing that I wish I knew before becoming a crochet designer is that time is elusive. <laughs> what I mean by that is we all have 24 hours in our day. Um, we all have our own responsibilities, we all have our own priorities. And thinking to yourself, I'm gonna put off starting designing because I don't have time, just means you will never start designing. And I'm not advocating burnout, I'm not advocating unhealthy lifestyles at all. We all know our limits. What I am advocating is prioritizing what's important. So if you really, really want to become a crochet designer, then can you prioritize designing rather than scrolling on Instagram for an hour? Can you maybe prioritize designing rather than an hour of Netflix? Can you prioritize um, designing rather than an hour of your lying? Because at the end of the day, Beyonce has 24 hours in a day, we have 24 hours in a day, and what we choose to do with it is up to us. So the way that I began designing was I used my spare time and so that I could consistently show up and 
design, I was getting up at 5 a.m. That's what worked for me. If you are a night owl, you might want to consider going to bed an hour later. I just found that I liked to have a fresh mind when I was doing the heavier work. And then no matter how your day went, at least you'd tick that off and you'd you'd showed up for yourself. Um, and I did that for a year, partly pre-COVID and then part of it during COVID. And um, actually once COVID then kicked in, I also used what would have been my commuting time to also put into HDDC. And if I hadn't have done that, and don't get me wrong, it was tough at times, I didn't want to do it, especially in the winter when it was dark. Um, if I hadn't have done that, I wouldn't be where I am now and that is because I wouldn't have put the time in and if you don't put the time in it doesn't get done so I totally hear people saying like work and family and social commitments like I totally get that but also look at how much time was created by Covid and by us being at home and we ne didn't necessarily use that and yes pandemic range it raging and there was just so many emotions I totally get that but what I'm saying is what even when some of these external things are taken out of our time our time was still absorbed by other things and so you really have to channel that into what it is you want to do um and really I would just say get started if you really really want to design but you only have five minutes a day then break down the bigger task into five minute tasks because I guarantee you that if you start today then in a year's time you will have outstretched what those who haven't started like if you have two people this person does five minutes a day and this pe this person's gonna wait the person that does five minutes a day is gonna continue to make steady progress it might be slow it might not be as fast as you like but they're gonna continue making progress whereas that person that's waiting to start still hasn't started but a year later you've completely like you've put multiple patterns out definitely just start whether you have five minutes half an hour whatever it is i'm in the process of putting together an additional page within workbook one which then tells you what tasks you can get done within five minutes 30 minutes and an hour and then also how to break down some of the bigger tasks so that maybe they fit into the 30 minute or the five minute bracket um just sort of like you would with a recipe so it's going to take you 30 minutes to do that okay i've got time i'm going to do that and before you know it you've worked your way through so to summarize three things i wish i knew before i became a crochet designer is one support it comes in various forms don't be disheartened if it doesn't come in the form that you thought and make sure you support others around you when you are that cheerleader two emotions <laughs> it's gonna be a roller coaster and that's perfectly normal you just need to find ways so that you can be on the front seat like whoa yes rather than <sighs> might make that snip it into my thumbnail <laughs> um and then the last one is that time you just got to prioritize whatever it is that is most important and what you want to see the most results in because that's the only way to make it come around just get started i actually had um a couple more that i wanted to go into originally it was going to be five things i wish i knew before i became a crochet designer and so what i've done is i've recorded three of them here and then all five of them are in a pdf and i'm going to put the link below so that you can go and get hold of that for yourself um it just goes through each five like what i've learned um ways that i have overcome it or got around it and then like um a bit of an action plan to get you started if you want to become a crochet designer and also there's a discount code for my first workbook in there just to help out anybody that is thinking about it but is just maybe holding themselves back so that's down below and um let me know which one of these three has surprised you the most below and i will i'm gonna start reading out comments in my next vlog so if you want to shout out comment below which one you are most surprised about now i want to thank you for all your time for spending your time watching this um <laughs> i hope that it's been helpful and that you have learned a couple of things from this and from what i've been through as a crochet designer 
um, and I am going to see you in the next vlog. So, my name's Heather and I teach new and aspiring crochet designers how to build an income stream from their crochet and I hope you have a lovely day. So that they they are that they are that they're there that they're there. <laughs>